Hey, this is Andrew Brown. In this video, we're going to take a look at AWS Compute Optimizer. In order to uh, properly use the service, you actually have to have compute that has been running for quite a while using something more than the free tier. So you don't really need to replicate this. You just need to watch me do it so we can learn together what's going on here. I've never used the service against my compute because I don't really need to re uh, right size uh, my Compute, but maybe we'll find out after using the service. So I'm in a, a different account here. I'm just an Xampro account. I'm going to go over to the AWS Compute Optimizer, and it, right now it's thinking that we're in CA Central, but I have stuff running in US East One. So I'm going to just switch this over to US <laughs> equals US East One, and we're going to see if we have anything here. I'm not seeing anything here. I'm just going to, need to go back here. And I mean, it is showing me something here. So it's saying under provision percent, 83%, five under, out of six under provision. And it's talking about Lambda function. So I guess this isn't just for EC2, it's for EBS, Lambda functions, EC2 instances, auto scaling groups, and ECS services on Fargate. Um, I'm actually surprised it's not talking about anything for EC2, but let's go over here and take a look. And yeah, again, I, I keep expecting us to see something here, but take a look here. This page list includes easy to instances of the top recommendations to optimize, to explore more recommendations, to understand the price performance impacting running your workload on Graviton 2 instances. Okay. So my question is, why don't I see my EC2 instances? Because I have at least one EC2 instance running here in US East 1, probably. Right, so we go over to here, and I have this very long running instance, right? It's right here, the exam pro production server. And if I go back over to here, you know, why doesn't it show up? Because it could totally show up here. So I'm gonna go back over to the dashboard. And uh, yeah, let me just read what's going on here. So it might be suggesting that I need to opt into uh, this, but I mean, I can see the service, right? So we'll go down here to the bottom left corner. It says, if you haven't set any right sizing preferences, Compute Optimizer considers all available EC2 instances that use the default values to generate recommendations. Um, okay, we'll go ahead and hit edit, any region. So, I mean, I would assume that we're already opted in here all opted in accounts. So everything is opted in for this to uh, work. We'll go over to general. Uh, there's an error getting the enrollment status of accounts. Refresh again. Okay. Let's try this again. Cannot get accounts. Account management. Okay. You can view opt-in status for individual accounts and delegate an administrator. So right now, it seems like everything is opted in. But we're not seeing anything in here. Well, let's go take a look at the Lambda functions at least because it was suggesting that there was Lambda functions here. And so we have some um, uh, very old Lambda functions in here and it is making some recommendations. So it's saying these are not optimized and they're underperforming and the current cost is this, but the current cost can be that. And so I'd save pennies. All right, how would I? go and optimize that if I clicked into this one. How do I know exactly what to change here? All right, so we'll go back here just a moment. It's not optimized. Okay, so it's saying like I'm using 128 megabytes and it's saying to utilize 160. And this is actually kind of nice for Lambda functions. I like this because uh, we would have to do power tuning to find out the price. So like we have Lambda Power Tuner. We do this in the Lambda section, right? And so there's this tool that we can use and power tune Lambdas. And then we could figure out our cost at the time of, but it would be nice if we could just turn on a service that doesn't cost anything and that would just tell us over time, hey, you should do this. So that's good for the Lambdas, but we have nothing for EBS. So we actually do have an EBS volume here and it's saying that it's optimized. So there's nothing for it to do. Okay, so, I mean, I guess it is doing stuff. It's just saying that this one's totally fine. Uh, recommended size, 30 uh, gigabits. Recommended IOPS, 3,000. So I have it at the, almost the lowest there. So this one is in good shape. Let's take a look if we have any auto-scaling groups. 
We'll just give it a moment here. I do believe that we have an auto scaling group here. So if I go down below to ASGs, yep, I got an auto scaling group, but it's not displaying anything. So Qubit Optimizer currently only generates recommendations for auto scaling groups that are that are a single instance type, and that has the same value for the desired minimum max capacity. So does that come back to these gravitrons? Okay, so it's for anything in the family here. So gener generate recommendations for several instance types and can run unsupported instance types in addition to supported types. However, Compute Optimizer only generates recommendations for supported instance types. Not all instance types are available in every region. So the following table lists are supported by Compute Optimizer. So let's take a look and see what I'm actually using for that ASG. And the way we would know is we go to the launch template. And it says T2 medium, okay? So we're gonna go back over here. We're gonna take a look. We have T2. So it says that T2 is supported. Then we go down below here. So Compute Optimizer generates recommendations for ASGs that run supported instance types, runs only a single instance type, no mixed instance types. We're only running one type. The values of desired minimum max capacity are all the same. Uh, for example, an ASG with a fixed number of instances. So maybe that's what's happening here. I don't really want to fiddle with this, but I just want to take a look at what it is. So we have desired at one, minimum at one, maximum at two. So this is where we have uh, a difference. I mean, I could change it. I don't think it would hurt anything. Because it's not like it's ever spinning up another server. What if I change this to one and go back here? I can't imagine that this is going to change immediately. But hey, at least we know that if it wants to make recommendations, then that ASG has to be one, one, one for, uh, for that. We'll go back over to here, take a look. Um, no scaling policy attached, no overrides are configured. So the next question, is there a, conf uh, a scaling policy attached? I don't see any because we don't have any dynamic, no predictive, no scheduled stuff. So there is no scaling policy. Um, the EBS volume apparently meets the requirements. The Lambda function meets the requirements. What about EC2? I mean, EC2 technically meets the requirements, but here's the thing. If it doesn't have the CloudWatch metrics, it can't collect it. So the EC2 instance requires at least 30 hours of metric data. It should have that. Um, if you've enabled enhanced infrastructure metrics, EC2 instance require at least 30 hours. So I definitely have that. Uh, but yeah, I'm, again, not sure why this one doesn't show up. I was hoping we'd see a little bit more here. But I'll go back here and just uh, undo this here. Let's just see if it shows up. Maybe it will. I'll just say it is optimized. So I'll just wait here for it to load, okay? Just give me a moment. It says current or Graviton. So it's maybe it's suggesting that it can't look at previous generations. So... I'm running a T2 medium, which is technically a T2, which is a previous generation. But what's considered previous generation is determined based on what will show up here uh, when we launch an instance. So maybe AWS is considering T2s previous generation because I know in RDS, while I was building out all the content here, uh, T2s were no longer selectable, but they are here. So I don't think it's a previous generation. I think T2s are still in use, these Zen uh, Zen stuff here. But yeah, I mean, at least we got an idea of what this does. But um, nothing's ever exciting. The Lambda, I think, makes it very clear. If there was savings here, it would tell us and it would say to, you know, make a difference in the recommended instance type and the demand on price and things like that. So there you go. Ciao.